Oh, what you know, Joe? I don't know nothing. What you know, Joe? Tell me something. Just before Thanksgiving, I took my family down to Bernie, Texas for a little pre-national lockdown getaway. Since we live in the People's Republic of Austin, we figured we might be put under house arrest sooner than even January. So we moved up our December plans for a holiday in one of Texas's most charming little towns. And it really is. Bernie is a very charming little Texas town just outside of San Antonio and it's become a sort of getaway tradition for us. It's like our family's version of going up to the Hamptons or Lake Tahoe. Only instead of the palatial estates of the elite, there's a bronze statue of a man spreading Wild Bill Hickok across the street from a gun shop and the original Black Rifle Coffee Company Cafe and Shop. Until fairly recently, I honestly had never heard of Black Rifle Coffee Company. The only thing I really knew about it was that it was a sponsor for the conservative news site, The Blaze. I also associate the brand with Steven Crowder's Good Morning Mug Club, wherein the brand is virtually inseparable from the aesthetic of a bunch of conservative guys sitting around in pajamas drinking coffee. Black Rifle Coffee is practically the star of that show. Black Rifle Coffee was founded by former Green Beret Evan Hafer six years ago as a kind of conservative reaction to the fact that most high-end coffees in America are loudly presented as left-leaning establishments. Expensive coffee and coffee shops for as about as long as I can remember are pretty much inseparable from man-bun donning baristas in the trendy centers of places like Portland or Seattle or Austin, dare I might say. But what about right-wingers? Don't they want to drink good coffee too? Well, no. Not in my experience. In my experience, people of the conservative persuasion look upon things like a pour-over or fresh ground French press as something that's kinda sorta not that macho. Like it's just a little too fussy, know what I mean? Conservative men typically idealize the kind of man who is willing to do anything for the sake of valor, without an ounce of complaint. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. Bitching about the quality of your morning coffee seems both impractical and beyond the normal parameters of that gorgeous, toxic masculinity that made my grandma melt in the strong, calloused hands of my grandfather. At least that's what I used to think, before Evan Hafer changed all that. Black Rifle wants to make gourmet coffee great again. And it's Mr. Hafer's view that this is in keeping with the traditional American spirit of patriotism and libertarianism. What drink did the Founding Fathers turn to after they dumped all that effet tea in the Boston Harbor? They turned to drinking coffee. And unlike Britain, coffee, not tea, has become our dominant caffeinated beverage of choice ever since. The Black Rifle shtick is essentially as follows. Coffee is as much a part of being a real American as rocking the Second Amendment and ordering a medium rare cheeseburger at a French restaurant. A good quality cup of $4 coffee should precede all of the American stuff we do. Be it fishing, shooting, blowing stuff up, or just constantly taking selfies of yourself with an AR-15 rifle. Coffee is there to start the day. But what about Folgers? I mean, I'm from Texas and my family's always been pretty conservative. And we always just drank Folgers out of a Mr. Coffee. My dad was a decorated Vietnam vet who built houses for a living. He hated stuff like Starbucks, but he drank coffee every day for as long as I knew him. And I think he found my own West LA interest in fine French pressed coffee to be, let's just say, a little disappointing. I can't tell you how relieved my dad was when I finally brought home a woman. It was my wife, my muse, my love. He was ecstatic. But Black Rifle Coffee is more than just an attempt to rewrite the cultural narrative surrounding high-end, small-batch roasted coffee. It's also a classic example of philanthropic capitalism, something I'm a little bit wary of. Philanthropic capitalism is when a for-profit business, the best kind I might add, sells a product not solely on the merits of the product itself as a thing that satisfies a natural demand in the free market, but also as a kind of charity, fulfilling some sort of perceived social need. Classic examples of philanthropic capitalism include the original business model for Tom's Shoes, wherein you're not just buying the shoes for the merits of the shoes as shoes, 
but because the shoes you buy go toward the promise of giving shoes to someone else who doesn't have shoes in one of a variety of developing countries. Or as Trump would say, shitholes. If you buy their shoes, then they'll also donate shoes. Conversely, if you don't buy their shoes, then they're not going to donate any shoes. Another example is Ethos Bottled Water, which is owned by Starbucks. If you buy their bottled water, they promise to donate a percentage of their revenue toward providing safe, clean drinking water once again to people in developing countries who might lack access to safe water. Shitholes. Hmm, that's all awesome, of course. But the problems with this sort of business model are multifaceted. On the one hand, it's hard for me to get past the idea that people are merely being manipulated by companies to get them to buy their products. Are you buying Tom's shoes because they were the best product for you at the right price? Or have you been guilted into it by the promise that unlike all of those other shoe companies, the purchase of their shoes means you're actually doing something good for the world? In this case, clothing the naked. And the advertising for Tom's shoes sort of seems to highlight this even more. How do you even sleep at night? Don't you want poor kids in Haiti to have shoes? You monster! Or how about this one? Either way, the strategy is clear to me. I have a product, but out there is a very, very competitive marketplace. So how do I make my product stand out? How do I get people to buy what I'm selling? One way is to provide a better product at a better price, or you could innovate and provide a new spin on a classic, therefore standing out from your competition. Or you can just use very clever marketing in order to make people feel very bad if they don't buy what you're selling, because after all, you're promising to make a tax-deductible charitable donation like 100% of all businesses in existence. Only unlike all the other businesses in existence, you plan to make your charitable contributions loud and public so that they can be used for emotional extortion. To me, that just seems like a crap move. Why not just make the best product you can at the best price? Let the product speak for itself instead of making people feel bad for not choosing you over the other possible choices. Because it works. Because people are actually taken in by this shit. This is how the Girl Scouts and their machine-made factory cookies got turned into a massive American industrial tradition. Because when a cute little girl comes up to you asking for a charitable donation in the form of a box of cookies, you can't say no, or else you're a piece of garbage. You're worse than a guy who doesn't tip. You're human trash. So to avoid that, you buy the cookies, and you get used to doing it every single year. Granted, the cookies are pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Well, the same goes for Tom's, Ethos Water, and now Black Rifle Coffee. Only this time with a Republican twist. Because don't you know, Black Rifle Coffee donates a portion of all of their revenue to causes that benefit or help military veterans, police, and first responders. It's a sort of post 9-11 charitable endeavor. Indeed, Black Rifle proudly boasts that 55% of all of their employees are in fact veterans, just like their founder, Evan Hafer. And the conservative Texas side of me kinda likes that. Why shouldn't we help our veterans, who sacrifice their own health and safety in order to make sure that people in the Middle East continue to hate us for at least a couple more generations? I mean, if the Middle East isn't pissed off at America, why would we even need a military in the first place? Am I right? I may not like American foreign policy much, because it's stupid, but whenever I think about the essence of what America is, I can't help but think of the heroism and sacrifice of the millions of men and women who fought and even died so that I could live in a country with free and fair elections, personal liberty to go and live however I want, the right to bear arms, and the freedom of speech. I mean, it's a shame they weren't successful, but at the very least, they tried. And it's because of that, and because of men like my father, that I can't help but love the armed forces. And besides, all of the coolest movies, toys, and video games were always about army stuff. How can you not love Rambo, G.I. Joe, Master Chief, the green guys from Toy Story, Sergeant Slaughter, Captain America, Colonel Sanders, John Cena, and Private Benjamin? Without the aesthetic and values of the armed forces, what even is America, I ask you? Therefore, I feel obligated 
as one should, to give back to veterans for all that they have done for this great, and I mean giant, massive country. However, this brings me to the other big problem with philanthropic capitalism. It doesn't actually help the people it claims to. Except for maybe the Girl Scouts, those ladies are living large. But let's just take Tom's shoes. Their endeavor of giving away shoes was famously a major humanitarian disaster. In the simple world of upper middle class white guilt, where everyone else in the world is your social inferior and in need of salvation, simply dumping a bunch of free shoes on the African subcontinent looked like a major triumph. Worthy of a round of hearty self-congratulation. But in the really real world, it turns out, there exist people in places like Africa, and Haiti, and Latin America, who actually make and sell shoes. Dumping free shoes on the population not only isn't just an inefficient means of distributing shoes, many of the shoes never make it where they're intended, but it also brings economic ruin to productive people who do make or sell shoes in the functional real economy. So instead of alleviating poverty, free stockpiles of shoes end up just making more of it, shutting down productive businesses and destroying countless jobs at the same time. Toms has come to terms with this themselves, which is why they no longer do this. Where is the evidence that arbitrarily employing veterans in the coffee industry is actually going to benefit veterans? Or for that matter, the coffee industry? One of the wonders of the free market is its capacity to guide individual people into professions where they can maximize their economic potential and productivity on the basis of their particular skills or merit. Hey. That's exactly what Evan Hafer did when he converted his experience with and love for coffee into an entrepreneurial venture. But what about other military veterans? Are they the best fit for making coffee? The answer is, not necessarily. Being a military veteran and making coffee have nothing to do with each other. The only reason this is a thing at all is because of the widespread misconception that military veterans, after they're discharged, are somehow incapable of working in any other capacity outside of the military. We get this stereotype typified in movies like Rambo, or the quintessential camouflaged homeless beggar, a man whose hopes and dreams were shattered by a combination of PTSD, drug abuse, and the lies of an unsupportive federal government. But is this really the case? Not really. What is the case, however, is that newly discharged military personnel and veterans do sometimes have a difficult time making the transition from military life into the civilian free economy. That is true. But the reason for this has very little to do with the military veterans themselves, or even that much with prejudice. Rather, the skills people acquire serving in the military don't easily translate into the free market. It turns out that there isn't a huge demand for radar technicians, or tank operators, or nuclear submarine commanders, or snipers, or guys who know how to launch mortar rounds. But this isn't even to say that all veterans even struggle to find their way. Some people in the military were things like nurses or engineers. They had the sort of jobs that are in high demand in the civilian world, and they're going to be okay. It's just that a lot of other people are finding themselves in pretty much the same position as the majority of a lot of new college grads. Shit out of luck. And what happens to all those poor college grads after they've taken out a loan for hundreds of thousands of dollars and spent four years reading meaningless avant-garde literature and articles about how gender is a myth? The poor bastards all end up working in coffee shops. Where else do you think all those left-leaning coffee shops got so many entitled, self-important know-it-alls to work at such a low-paying job? They get them in with the promise that at the very least, if they're gonna be poor, they can at least look cool doing it, which is sort of what college was all about in the first place. It's a trap. And now we're doing the same thing to veterans? All Black Rifle Coffee's done is change around the aesthetic, basing their look and ethos on the Black Rifle, common to pretty much everyone who's ever served in the military over the last 20 years. They've changed the look, they've changed the official political orientation, but the trap remains the same. Here's to the ideologically driven indentured servitude of the coffee industry. So 55% of all people who work at Black Rifle are veterans. Because they're veterans? That's a statistic to me that smacks of both manipulation of consumers and condescension to veterans. Veterans in America do not need companies to hire them because they're veterans. They need companies to hire them because they are the right man or woman for the job, 
and veterans aren't going to be able to make that happen as individuals unless they're allowed to fail and reinvent themselves in the free market beyond the scope of their old military profession. Just like Evan Hafer was allowed to struggle and reinvent himself as a coffee guy. And consumers do not need companies to hire veterans just because they're veterans. Consumers flourish when businesses provide the best people for the job, regardless of whether or not they're conservative, liberal, black, white, tall, short, a military veteran, or just some guy who's played way too much Call of Duty. Let me tell you, I've been to the Black Rifle Coffee Shop in Bernie about four different times, and all four times I ordered a regular house brewed coffee. And overall, I've enjoyed my visits. The store looks cool with its big homage to the Texas Rangers and all the black rifles everywhere. And I mean everywhere, even the plunger in the bathroom is a giant black rifle. The place is clean, the service is friendly and efficient, the clientele are a breath of fresh air from your typical coffee house experience. But in all four visits, the one thing I haven't had is a decent cup of coffee. It was just never that good. Either the coffee has been sooty or brewed incorrectly, sometimes using too many beans, sometimes maybe not enough, and sometimes the coffee was even cold. Either way, it's never been good. Not for me. I've enjoyed the espresso as an alternative, I've enjoyed the desserts out of the pastry case, but the coffee has always pretty much sucked. So I ask you, who in the hell cares if 55% of the employees at Black Rifle Coffee are veterans when 100% of the time, I've been unable to get a good, properly made cup of fresh, hot coffee. McDonald's doesn't brag about how many servicemen and women they hire, and yet their coffee is almost always served hot, tastes better, and only costs a dollar, as compared to Black Rifles, which is somehow, and I don't even know how, closer to four dollars a cup. But I do know how. I'm paying for philanthropic capitalism. I'm paying not just for the coffee, but the sense that, as a conservative, I'm aiding a conservative moral cause. But you know what? At the end of the day, wouldn't everybody be better off if Black Rifle Coffee just stuck to selling the best coffee at the best price? And wouldn't veterans be better off finding the most fulfilling and most promising work for them as individuals? I suspect that just as much as dumping free shoes on Africa only hurts people in the long run, that perhaps hiring a special demographic entirely out of pity only wastes the time of everyone involved. And time, as you may or may not know, is money. But what about the coffee beans themselves? After all, only a small percentage of Black Rifle's total business is actually bound up with their two, yes I said two, coffee shops, both of which are in the San Antonio area. The vast majority of their business is actually as a mail order coffee distributor. I had to find out for myself, so I went ahead and bought a pound of coffee for $16. There's the price tag. It's a nice bag though, easy to open. I just want to say while I work here that my objections to philanthropic capitalism are really rooted in nothing more than preference. It feels a real psychological need for community. It's a way to bring like-minded people together. If LA rich girls can have Tom's shoes and evangelicals can have Chick-fil-A, then why can't gun nuts have a coffee shop? Coffee lovers like me ought to be glad. It just means less people are gonna drink Folgers. And that's something we can all get behind. Unless of course you work for Folgers. But at the same time, I really do think veterans are better off doing work that suits them as individuals, and not just because they're veterans. Being a veteran shouldn't define you, because definitions as you know imply limits. You're a lot more than that. You're a lot more than just a veteran. I'm a lot more than just a YouTuber. So how is this coffee? It's actually very good. Much better than McDonald's. Or what I've had in the store. Regardless of your political views, I can sincerely recommend this. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.